Hi there and welcome to another episode of Outdoor 101. Today we will be talking about one of the aspects of outdoor life that I enjoy the most. Outdoor cooking. This is however not a video where I tell you what to buy. I present you with a number of options and you will be left with the decisions for yourself. My personal view is that food tastes much better outdoor. Even the simplest of course becomes a delicacy at camp after a hike and don't get me started on how good coffee tastes in the morning when the air is still crisp. For now I'm not planning to cover specific recipes for outdoor cooking uh, since I have a lot of videos where I cook and you can check them out. However, I may be persuaded if there's a popular demand. If you want something warm to drink or eat, you'll need some kind of a cooking system. And here you face a number of options, much depending on your preferences. For example, do you enjoy cooking? Do you prefer dehydrated food or do you want to cook from scratch at camp? And how important is it for you to say weight on the food? For example, is it more important to carry less than to enjoy a fresh brewed cardboard coffee in the morning. I think you know where I stand on that one. You need some kind of heat source, whether it's a campfire, a spirit burner and so forth, or and you need pots, pans, kettles and so forth. Of course, you can throw the steak at the embers and throw the potatoes in and bake them the same way and thus reducing your cooking system down to a single match. I however like to broaden my options just a tad more. Let's talk about mess kits. There are several kinds of mess kits to choose from uh, and they come in different sizes whether you're cooking for just one person or several. Uh, and they run on different fuels, gas and spirits are the most common. And the advantage with these they pretty much got everything you need to cook except for the food and you can place them almost anywhere. The advantage of these kits are of course that they're good to go, just unpack it and you can start to cook. Uh, the disadvantage is they are pretty bulky and they add quite some weight to your pack uh, and then we haven't started including the spirits or the gas. When choosing between gas and spirits they have different perks. Uh, gas in general will boil your food much faster and you have a higher precision when it comes to adjust the heat of the flame. Uh, however, you might need several kind of canisters depending on the outside temperature. Uh, there are separate canisters for winter, spring, autumn or summer. So uh, you will have, have account for that. And uh, for me, one backside of this, it's, it's hard to know how much there is left. Uh, when I shake these I can hear there's still gas, but I can't really determine if it's gas enough for another 24 hour hike or if it's just for a pot of coffee. So that's the backside for me. Uh, of course you can time how long you've used it, but if you're several ones use the same gas canister, well you're pretty clueless on how much the previous person used. Uh, but if you pick one extra, well, I guess you're good to go. Uh, the spirits on the other hand, if it's really cold you might need to preheat the burner to get the flame going. Uh, and if, if it's severe cold, it's 10 degrees Celsius or below, uh, the food will take quite a long time before you get it ready. Uh, on the other hand, for me, the upside with this, I have a pretty good a sense of how much I can cook with the remainder in this bottle. I can see it. So uh, I'm pretty confident with that one and I'm mostly used with that, but it's a matter of taste, I guess. 
Then there are the hobby stoves. Uh, most of them can run on several kinds of fuels. They're quite versatile. Uh, you can use them as a wood stove, you can use hexamine tablets, you can put a spirit burner in them. I'm sure there's those for gas as well. So there's multiple kinds of fuel. And uh, as you can see, they pack down to almost nothing. And uh, some of them are ridiculous lightweight. So you can pretty much put them in your pocket and you don't feel the extra weight they add. However, you need still need to bring some pans, pots or kettles. And just like the mess kits, you can use these pretty much anywhere. Uh, I have used my bush box on the edge of a stump, uh, heating up coffee and when I left I could see no trace that there had been a fire, a hobo stove standing there. And finally, there's the campfire. It brings heat, it brings light, and it's a source of meditation. And for most of us, the campfire is the ultimate symbol of outdoor life. And when it's a viable option, it's always my first choice. The disadvantage with the campfire is that it's not always a viable option. You can't just start a campfire anywhere or anytime. There can be a fire ban because of a severe drought or because you're in the middle of a nature reserve. Some biomes offer very little firewood and heavy rains can make it very hard to get the fire going. And you also need tools to process the firewood. And just like the hobo stove, you still need to bring pans, pots or kettles. Of course you can also bring the wood but um, then the whole idea of ultralight is pretty much out the window. The ability to start a campfire is a superb way to show off your skills and show everyone who's boss, but it takes a good deal of practice and for the beginner it might seem intimidating. So therefore the campfire gets its own episode in this series. There are a large number of meals and drinks you can get dehydrated. As long as you can boil a couple of cups of water you'll have a warm and sometimes even tasty meal 5-10 to 10 minutes later. Uh, for the sake of argument, I will include hot chocolate, instant coffee and tea in this category, since all they need is hot water to complete. Uh, if you followed me, you know my opinion on the abomination they call instant coffee, though. The obvious pros is that you save a lot of weight with these meals, and in general they have a long shelf life. Uh, the con is that most of them are quite bland, actually, and they are pricey. You can, however, counter both of those cons by making your own dehydrated food. And then we have the MREs. These packages are meals ready to eat and usually they contain a ration for 24 hours, including plastic spoons, forks, sugar, whiteners and such. From the beginning it was strictly for the US Armed Forces, but as time has passed you can find civilian versions from, these, from a large number of countries. Originally you can eat it straight from the bag without warming or any other preparations, but now you can find dehydrated versions and they are still labeled MREs. The pros is that you will get all the calories you need for 24 hours in a bag or a box and you have a very long shelf life on your pack. The cons is, since it's ready to eat, you won't save that much weight, and you will probably be paying through your teeth. Since I haven't tried any MREs myself, I have no opinion of the taste. But from what I see in different videos, it's fairly mixed reviews. From awful to good, with a lot of meh in between. I must confess I'm not inclined to try them out anytime soon, but I've changed my mind before. Bringing ordinary ingredients for cooking adds more weight to your pack, but it will potentially yield you a meal to die for. Your limit is what you are willing to carry outside and how much time you are prepared to put inside to your cooking. For me the cooking alone can be an excuse for an outing, and more often than not I am willing to carry luxury items to make the meal even better. Sometimes I decide on a special meal I want to cook and I add this to my shopping list. Other times I just take what's in the pantry and cook with what I got. So let's finish up with some recommendations for two stereotypes of hikers. And uh, 
most of us is somewhere in between these two and we can move on the scale in any direction at any time. Uh, but the first stereotype, it's the ultralight multi-day hiker. And typical for this hiker, it's your aim is to save as much weight in your pack as possible. You want to cover as much ground as you can every day on a trail without wasting a lot of time on finding firewood and making exclusive meal. And after you finished with your breakfast or lunch, you want to leave as quick as you can to get on the trail. And cooking should be a quick affair from the minute you stop till you start eating maximum 15 minutes. And the gear I would recommend for the multi-day ultralight hiker. It's a gas burner with a billy pot, preferably in titanium or something lightweight, and you will eat dehydrated food. And your cooking basically consists of boiling water for your dehydrated food, or for coffee and tea, and to decontaminate any water you can find from rivers and lakes. Uh, food, that's fuel for your hike, not the purpose of the hike. And the second stereotype, now the end of the scale. Uh, this is the beginner. And typical for the beginner is you're starting out and you want a kit you can use in many ways because you haven't really decided on what kind of an outdoor type you are. Uh, and you want to be able to vary your cooking on your outings. And you're not particularly interested in combining different parts to build your custom made cooking system, at least not in the beginning. And you're not in a real hurry and you don't mind a little extra weight in your pack as long as it gives you quality of life. Uh, and for you, I would recommend the mess kit and the food of your choice. You can do most meals you could do at home on your stove, or you can just make a dehydrated meal. Uh, if you want a campfire, you can still use the cookware from your mess kit and save some fuel. And with a good mess kit, it will stay with you for a lifetime if you not throw it in front of a train. So, I hope this uh, basic overview has helped you to decide somewhat what kind of cooking systems that suit you best. In the description below you can find links to several videos I made before that is more in depth of the different types of cooking gear. As for campfire, different types and how to start them etc, I will make an own video in this series of Outdoor 101. So, if you think this was helpful, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, and don't be shy to use the comments for opinions or questions. And if you want to be sure that you get notified when the next episode of Outdoor 101 is released, press that subscribe button. And don't forget the bell. But until the next time, take care and go outdoors and find your own adventures. Cheers. <laughs>